Next on our house tour, we are gonna go into Stranger Things. This one comes with a lot of expectations. All of us who love the show, who love the season, definitely have a wish list of scenes that we really wanna see. And I have to say, I think they did a fantastic job in this house. There's a lot going on in season four. We've got subplots happening all over the place, including, of course, the kids in Hawkins and what's going on there. We have kids in California. We have Eleven in the Project Nina location out in the middle of the desert. We even have a whole storyline happening all the way in Russia in this season. Some choices had to be made, of course, in order to keep us from jumping all over the place. And in this house, we get a strong presence of one slash Henry slash Vecna story. We also get a strong and might I say delicious dose of Eddie Munson, which I am all about. I think that he is such a great character. We love him. We love the arc of his story throughout the season and having him in the house with his, you know, combination of heartfelt, scary and funny scenes, I think is just the perfect pairing with all of the Vecna that we're getting. So right when you enter, you are standing outside of Eddie Munson's trailer. It is perfect and honestly the size of an actual trailer. As with the season, you are immediately hit with the death of Chrissy. It is nuts because right before you even go in the house, like you're still outside of what you know, is basically the facade of the house. And we already see a silhouette of Chrissy rising up in that trance, you know, that precedes Vecna's horrible killing, right? You can see her, the silhouette of her rising up, going all the way to the ceiling. It's just absolutely really, really cool. So you know right off the bat that like, we're jumping in, like we're here, this is happening. So we could not take photos inside of Eddie's house, but let me tell you right now, this is one of the most detailed, awesome spaces I've ever seen as far as recreating a set it's complete. It has everything. You can see his guitar in there. They even have on the floor in a laundry pile the Halloween mask that he wears that he borrows from Max. And if you didn't know, this place, this house is in the same location as the Halloween house the year before. So it's just, you know, layers and layers and layers of fun and nods. And honestly, you probably won't even see it. It's kind of in the dark back in Eddie's bedroom. Netflix actually shared the original audio from the show so when you hear Eddie yelling to Chrissy to wake up and he doesn't like it that is actually the audio from the show so you're getting Eddie's actual voice this isn't just someone doing a re-recording of it and it really hits when you're coming through there so once you've moved through you've seen this incredible trailer set you walk out to what appears to be the back porch or the backyard but now you're actually in max's backyard you get to see your first sighting of vecna in this area so pay very close attention we get or you can get up to i think it's seven vecna encounters throughout the house on a good walkthrough it is absolutely amazing to see vecna the costuming team worked directly and very closely with netflix to make this an exact replica of the costume that jamie campbell bauer wore in the show and they did an amazing job on this another thing to note in this scene is that the trees that you see in this scene are from a day in the park with barney just a little side note for those who like to see all these little easter egg things and know the history of some of these little prop pieces that we have in the houses next we head into an area for the nina project so you go through the door of the desert and you'll see Eleven in her sensory deprivation tank working on recalling her memories. They use some screens in the background to show some of those memories just like in the show. This is really cool as you can walk around the tank like it's not just in the wall. You actually can walk around the tank on two different sides and you can see the view of her in the side angle everything they did a really fantastic job of making this feel like you are actually standing in the room now while you're in here you can hear number one monologuing to her uh, you know how human life is useless and he flows through the whole like you know oh wasting days wasting months wasting years um you know kind of his i don't know it's like super creepy the way that that guy the actor's voice moves and uh, the depth of it it's just absolutely amazing you also get an awesome boo hole here one of my favorites that really got me and this is just with one and he just kind of comes around he's just staring at you and it's the most piercing stare absolutely loved it i think that the most powerful scene throughout the entire house and again we were not able to take pictures in here probably because of that um, is the rainbow room scene and what we're doing here is we actually get to walk through the battle between 11 and 1 11 being in the rainbow room and one just on the other side of that wall they're battling and you get to be right in the middle of it and you get all the feels from this they have lighting changes audio changes air blasters a video projector they even have the chevet fog machines that come into play 
gameplay here. You're getting like every type of, you know, special effect that can happen to really envelop you into this, in this space. This is one of the main reasons I want to go through this house time and time again, because you could never get the whole thing in one walkthrough. It's actually too long of a scene, but I want to be able to capture as many aspects of it as possible. 11 is perfection. That's all I can say. Bravo, brava, you're nailing it. We move through the halls and next we're coming upon Max's crayon drawing of the Creole house. It's just this hall. It's a really cool scene. Um, I love the scale and the size of it. It looks really, really good. I especially love the rose stained glass on the door. It's very, very cool. So this whole scene with Max's drawings really helps to introduce the idea that now we are moving into the Creole house. So we're kind of coming up into Vecna's weird reality sort of dream sequence. We have the iconic imagery of everything kind of floating around, all of those images floating around. You get the clock, you know, you get the stairs. Um, and this is where we get, it's so sad to see, but the first major kills that he has in this season, and that's going to be Chrissy, all sort of entangled and tied up. And then, of course, we have poor Fred. If you don't know Fred, it was a reporter from the school, and he is Vecna's second victim. Um, and uh, bless his heart, you know, the poor guy doesn't get a lot of time on screen, but yeah, we, we lose him right away as well. So this space is enormous. It is really, really big, um, and it's done that way on purpose. Now, with the lights on, you really kind of lose a lot you get to see the details in here um, as far as space and scale but this space when it's done in the walkthrough or in the you know actual event is really powerfully done with lighting sound you know all of the vibes are there and you really do feel that sense of walking through a dreamy sort of meditative you know stuck in an alternate universe you know vibe going on from here, we're back in Eddie's trailer, and now it's a completely different place, right? The gate was opened up by Chrissy's death, and man, oh man, when you go through here, all I can tell you is be sure to look up, because you are going to get that full-scale, double-sided, you know, Hawkins reality versus the upside-down reality. Now, you are walking through in the upside-down, but if you look up, you are going to see a full-scale Dustin inside of Eddie's trailer that is in Hawkins. You get the sheet, you get everything, and it is just absolutely phenomenal. It is a breathtaking, like, moment of, you know, the way the space is. You, it's very, very real. After a few more scenes, we end up outside of Eddie's trailer, and yes, we do get Oh, that epic rooftop scene with Eddie and Dustin fighting off the bats. We get Master of Puppets, and we are really enjoying this scene. Now, and I got to tell you, the kid who plays Dustin, or the guy, I don't know, the woman, I don't know who it is, but man, do they nail it. I mean, you, I, I couldn't stop looking at their face. Like, I feel like this, did we get actual Dustin on this night? Because I, I, it was absolutely wonderful. So now we are in the Creole attic in the Hawkins world, not the Upside Down, and we have Max, and she is floating Oh, it's, I, I know with the lights on, her face looks a little odd, but I'm telling you at night, it really, really works, especially with the eyes. So in this scene, you're walking through and you get Lucas coming out. He does such a great job. He's screaming for her. He's trying to help her. He's trying to reach her. And then we also have Chrissy's boyfriend, everybody's favorite person, right? Jason, who's coming in and interrupting things. Has He's destroyed the Walkman. He's screaming and yelling. And you walk right through this. So you're looking at Max. You see Lucas. You've got Jason on the other side. There's a lot going on in this space through here. But I think it's really, really cool. If you look at the table below, you've got the little notes that, you know, Lucas and Max were passing back and forth because they weren't, you know, wanting to make any noise at all. It's just perfectly done. It's a really, really well done scene. You're very close to everything and you get to go exactly through the scene itself. The next room is definitely one that I think we all thought in our heads, oh man, I hope they have this because I got to see it. So now we're in the Creole attic still, but we're in the upside down and you can see now, you know, obviously we could not take photos in this space. Again, such a bummer, but eh, guys, it's so, so cool. So the suit that the um, Vecna is wearing has very specific lighting elements as well as pneumatic pistons that move throughout the entire body to create the, the movement and the twitching and sort of the suffering that's happening. Because here we have Robin, she's coming in and she's throwing the Molotov cocktails at him. And when she does, you get the sense of like explosion, you know, movement and pain coming out of this guy. It is absolutely awesome. So that about wraps up everything from this particular house. But before you leave the house, please, please slow down after that room a little bit because when you move through here, you're going to get a fully costumed scare actor. Yes, not puppet, 
not just in a wall, but a fully walking around costume scare actor Demi Gorgon. There are two of them that you can hit. The one at the end, oh, so good, so good.